today we're going to be talking about uh, Simulia for SolidWorks is the 3D experience structural analysis package. And a couple things about that is this really is the simulation um, product for the 3D experience platform. So 3D experience is a new new offering that's kind of in between the Dassault Big Brother desktop versions and the SolidWorks uh, desktop versions. And it kind of fits in the middle uh, there. And where this comes into play is it actually utilizes the Simulia technology from our big brother, uh, so Simulia and Abacus. So the general contact from Simulia comes down, the Abacus solvers come down from that from that software, and as well as the advanced meshing types. So we're going to go beyond what we are used to in the SolidWorks simulation package, which is the tetrahedral. Uh, mesh elements into quad elements as well and a mixed a mixed bag of of mesh types and then we're also going to look at the SOLIDWORKS connectors so you know the majority of us are designing ins inside of SOLIDWORKS there's actually a connector to get our files from SOLIDWORKS out to the Simulia for SOLIDWORKS uh, products just kind of give you a feel for what do those products look like right these are out there to give us more advanced capabilities than what are offered inside of solidworks simulation but that and also to offer the people who are maybe uh you know looking into solidworks on the cloud or solidworks in the 3d experience platform a simulation capability you know within that within that product so there's really three main uh kind of staples should i say for the simulia for solidworks products and those are structural simulation designer structural performance engineer and structural mechanics engineer and with structural simulation designer think of this along the lines of simulation professional so the simulation product that we're used to on our solidworks desktop that gives us linear static comparison assemblies, resonant frequency, conjugate heat transfer through the thermal solver and buckling. The equivalent of that would be simulation, or sorry, structural simulation designer on the platform. A step up from that and really kind of getting into the SOLIDWORKS simulation premium capabilities is structural performance engineer. And that's where we get into the nonlinear static analysis that's nonlinear materials as well as nonlinearities in the in the geometry. Thermal structural analysis, so understanding the stress and strain and displacement due to the thermal loading conditions, and nonlinear dynamic implicit. So this is akin to what you would see in SOLIDWORKS Simulation Premium. However, it takes us a little bit beyond that. Very high strain capabilities um, and high deformation. Uh, capabilities and structural performance engineer. And then finally, structural mechanics engineer contains everything that the other other two offerings have, but this brings in the nonlinear dynamic explicit abacus solver. So we're now talking about really high deformation crash type testing uh, components. We can also do where uh, cells actually break, where we'll have fracture uh, happen in the mesh itself, quasi-static explicit analysis. And this is where we get into the complex frequency. So this is more akin to the linear dynamic. So inducing a force or vibration into the system or a force at a frequency and understanding the stress, strain, and displacement due to that. So those are really the three main offerings from the Simulia for SOLIDWORKS uh, platform. Just kind of give you a feel for where these where these fit. We we kind of broke up the the offerings amongst roles. So we have designers, engineers, and analysts. And you know, at the designer level, that's where SolidWorks Premium comes into play. SolidWorks Simulation Standard for things like fatigue. SolidWorks Simulation Professional is more more in between designers and engineers, where we're starting to get into resonant frequency topology optimization, parametric optimization, buckling and thermal. And then you have SOLIDWORKS Simulation Premium, and this really does a good job of linear dynamics. And it also does those nonlinear studies as well, 
But really, this is where the structural performance engineer and structural mechanics engineer kind of blur the line between engineer and analyst. And this is what does the nonlinear, the, the high strain, high elasticity uh, models incredibly well. And then at the analyst level, that true multi physics type uh, solution is the Simulia, the, the Dassault system Simulia offering. So what we're going to actually be looking at uh, today is the structural mechanics engineer. And I just want to show you kind of that interface and how it how it behaves. So to start off, we're actually going to look at a setup inside a SOLIDWORKS simulation. So kind of what we're used to already. We're going to utilize the SOLIDWORKS 3D experience connector and get those files up uh, into the 3D experience um, product. And then we're going to look at structural mechanics engineer. So let's go ahead and look at SOLIDWORKS simulations. So what we have here is a Parrot drone. It's one of the SOLIDWORKS uh, and Dassault Systems customers. You can see it is a multi-part assembly. So we have the guards uh, on either side of that chassis, as well as the chassis itself, and then the um, plate, which we are essentially impacting or doing a drop test on top of. And what I wanted to discuss here is just kind of the setup and, and what this looks like inside of SOLIDWORKS simulation. So we can see we have a plasticity von Mises material model inside the drop test uh, for the for the ABS for the plastic parts, and then also a large number of contacts that are set up here. So what we see is, you know, every part has a pair of interactions and these interactions or contacts are what tell the software how it's going to behave. And in this case, it was a, a large number of no penetration contacts. Gave the software the velocity at impact and the direction of gravity. And also that this was going to be a rigid, rigid, rigid target uh, setup. And then also how long do we want to solve this analysis past the impact? point. So that's kind of the setup of a drop test inside a SOLIDWORKS simulation. Let's go ahead and look at taking this setup over into 3D experience. So we're going to make use of the 3D experience connector. And just like any other add-in inside of SOLIDWORKS, this is turned on through the add-ins. Uh, Left-hand side is this session, right-hand side is at startup. And what that does is it gives us, very similar to the PDM Blueberry, another tab over here on the task pane. And what you see is this links me to my 3D experience tenant. And what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to save all of these components out to the cloud. So these are being saved out to my company's secure tenant. And I'm also going to give these a revision comment here. So I'm just indicating, hey, I'm taking these out for the structural mechanics engineer analysis. So I want these released uh, and reserved after they're saved. So what's happening here is it's actually sending those files out to the server. Those are being uploaded and actually converted into a file format that the 3D experience um, product can, can best utilize, and that is a 3D, 3D XML format. So we can see the upload does take a little bit of time. It's saving the files at this point. And once those files are saved, it tells me that my product is ready to be used on the 3D experience platform. So I'll go ahead and select OK. And from there, we're going to go ahead and transfer the SOLIDWORKS simulation study setup as well. So just because we're utilizing uh, the SOLIDWORKS or 3D experience for my run doesn't mean that we have to negate anything that we did in SOLIDWORKS simulation. So once that has been uploaded, it tells me that that is ready and available, and we can move on to structural mechanics engineer. So when we open up Structural Mechanics Engineer, this is the interface uh, that, that launches. And what we see is we're actually in the 3D Experience app. And I'm going to come over here to my compass, and we're going to start one of the specific apps. So I'm going to choose Mechanics Scenario Creation, and this is essentially Structural Performance Engineer. 
and it's asking me to start a simulation. Well, the name of my file was actually Parrot Drone. So what I'm going to do is just do a very quick search. And this is actually going out to the Anovia backbone for where these files are saved. And I'm able to very quickly find that, that file set. Once I select OK, I can choose the app that this will open up uh, into. And what we see is this actually opens then in structural model creation. On the left hand side, we have something that's very similar to the feature manager tree that we're used to. Uh, over on the left and then on the right is something that is actually titled feature manager tree and this kind of walks us through what we have in in this uh, scenario so over on the left you can see that the the, the files came in there actually was a fem rep uh, uh, brought in with regards to the the model itself from solidworks so that's part of what was brought over from solidworks simulation and then we can also see the individual parts that were brought in and converted, as well as then the materials. So the ABS and the 1020 that I had assigned for the floor itself. So with regards to this model structural model creation app, the next thing that we can do is actually generate the mesh. And what you see across the bottom, there are all the different meshing cap capabilities. So with the mesh, what we're going to look at is some of these different options. So we can do surface with a triangle mesh. We can do a surface with a quad mesh. So that's the shell that we're used to, a tetrahedral mesh, and then also a swept 3D and a hex dominant and voxel mesh capability as well. What I'm going to do is go ahead and hide all my bodies and actually show the mesh. So I converted instead of a tetrahedral for that base, uh, plane, I used a quad, a swept mesh. I kept the tetrahedral mesh that came over from SOLIDWORKS for the rest of that geometry, but we certainly could manipulate that and adjust that to something that might be hex dominant or something other uh, than that. So the meshing capability is broadened with regards to, to 3D experience. So now that in the uh, structural model creation app, right? We're now, what you notice is we actually switch to a mesh creation app. You never leave the interface, but based on what you select down there in, I, I would call that the command manager down at the very bottom, it switches apps kind of seamlessly. So you get those next set of uh, tools and options as you select through that. So you can see it says mesh creation up at the very top, but technically we're still doing the initial setup of this model. So from there, once that kind of pre-processing is in place, what we're going to do is switch into the mechanics scenario creation app. But what I wanted to show you is the wide list of other apps that we have access to uh, when you are granted these roles in 3D experience. So you can see there's a, a laundry list of these in here, including the ones that look like the SOLIDWORKS icon with the link, that's the SOLIDWORKS connector. But for this, we're going to go back into the mechanical scenario creation app. And what that's going to do is it's going to open up the model with essentially the setup that came over from SOLIDWORKS simulation and some additional aspects that we're going to add. So what we see is we're now in the mechanical scenario creation app. And with regards to that, we're going to look at some of the setup of this model. So that feature manager that I mentioned where you add that in is down here at the bottom. And there's also an assistant. And I use the assistant quite a bit when we're setting up or going through the setup of the model. And what this does is it really just gives us a checklist of things to go through. And the first one is beyond the mesh in the femrep is actually going in and specifying the step for the model. And this is where we go from either a static step to a frequency step, or in this case, what was utilized was actually an explicit dynamic. So this is specifically using the explicit advocate solver, but an explicit dynamics step. And in here, you specify the amount of step time, 
any scale factor as well as any advanced uh, geometric nonlinearity that you want to bring into into play. And that kind of satisfies that initial setup. From there, we can look at the parts and that's just indicating what we're utilizing in the in the model. There's also a wide range of connections here as well. So the connections are the same as connectors inside of SOLIDWORKS simulation. So these are the virtual bolts, pins, ties that link components together. Um, you have surface fasteners, line fasteners, a, a wide range of couplings that you can utilize. Interactions is next, and for those interactions is the general contact. So inside of SOLIDWORKS, we're used to a bonded contact that kind of holds everything together. Inside of 3D experience, inside of structural performance engineer, structural mechanics engineer, we utilize a general contact. And you can see that here when we go into the properties. And what that means is essentially everything is no penetration right from the very beginning. But instead of having to specify all those individual face pairs, the software does that for us. And it's an incredibly robust uh, contact condition. Next are the restraints. So a clamp would be the same as fixed. We also have a fixed displacement, planar symmetry, ball joints, wide range of fixtures there as well. And if I go back into my feature manager, we can take a look here uh, at the loads as well. So we've got pressures, forces, uh, gravity that we can apply, prescribed displacements, as well as a wide range of other uh, loading capabilities that you see down there at the very bottom. In this case, an initial uh, condition was assigned into this model. Now, it's specified as a force or a load, but I utilized a fixed displacement on that bottom uh, bottom plate, and I basically just made it fully rigid. I, I specified a zero displacement across the board with regards to that. And then I also assigned gravity into the model as well. So we gave it a negative condition and you see that with the green arrow there on the screen and then as far as my load it was an initial velocity this is that same negative five meters per second that we utilize inside of solidworks simulation so you can see that that's been applied to the entire drone itself so i'm going to go ahead and hide those out of the screen so it's that same creepy eyeball that we have inside of solidworks to hide and show and then I wanted to show you that even though we did the meshing technically in another app, we have the ability to go in and modify that on the fly right inside the study. So if we wanted to change something, we can do that. And we can do that using the mesh part manager. And in here, this is where we can specify additional things like whether or not we're using linear or quadratic elements, so high quality versus draft quality. We can resize different things. Let's say the overall mesh uh, size itself or assign mesh control as well. So a lot of different things as far as that, that setup is concerned. At this point, everything is pretty much set up and ready to start the run. So that is the simulate checkbox on the assistant. And what that's going to do is bring up the simulate tab down here at the bottom. And you can see that there's a couple things that we have set up. One is a model scenario check one is a simulation check and the next one is the actual simulate uh, solve itself so the simulation check i use that quite a bit it actually is a it, it's a sanity check to make sure hey everything's set up properly before we start that that solve the other option with regards to solving is this software does run local so it gives you access to four cores to solve locally or you can purchase credits that allow you to solve on the cloud and give you up to 128 cores that you can solve your problem uh, across so we'll skip ahead uh, from the simulate and we'll take a look at the results here so with regards to the results these are going to be very similar to what you would see inside of solidworks simulation so we're looking at that explicit dynamic step. I want to see maybe the overall deformation. And we can actually pick at individual plot points that you see over there on the right-hand side to see what's happening throughout this, this deformation. We can look at a displacement plot here as well. And we can select that play button in the compass to actually animate 
this impact. And we can see that, you know, that general contact did a really good job of kind of releasing that that lower guard as it hit. We actually see the shock wave develop through the geometry. And we can also see that the other on the right hand side there that is bobbling around is almost at the point where it was going to you know, pop off of there as well. We can also look at the von Mises plot. Let me move my uh, feature manager here so that I can bring my plot uh, legend out here onto the screen. And we can continue to animate that. We can also get a point, uh, a point contact in there. Let me stop the plot though first here and let me go to my maximum step. And we can see that the probe tool that we're used to inside of SOLIDWORKS this is actually available all the time, no matter where you move your cursor, as long as a plot is being shown in structural mechanics engineer. So depending upon where we kind of reassign this or realign it, wherever I move that cursor, we're getting live feedback as to what that stress is. You can also look at things like velocity vectors. We can look at plastic strain in the model. There's a ton of different outputs that we have the ability to look at inside of um, structural performance engineer and structural mechanics engineer that are you know, really uh, enlightening to the actual output. And then, you know, kind of the, the uh, good old standby factor safety as well. We can see where we are either above, that's what is in the, the dark color. Anything in between that range between one and two is what is shown in the color, the color itself. So we can adjust that that scale as well to show, you know, maybe a little bit more safe uh, or or less safe, should I say. So a lot of different result options there. One of the other things that we can look at with regards to this is plot sectioning. So just like inside a solid simulation, we have the ability to go in and kind of understand what's happening inside the model as well as what's happening, you know, on the surface. So we can do a plot section here. We can also use, like I said, that live probe tool, and then we can also turn that section plot off uh, as well. We can also show those min and max ranges on the part on the part and on the results to show where those are located. And then we can also turn those off. We can also use an XY plot and we can utilize uh, node sets, paths, or other display groups. And in this case, I want to look at my fixed displacement um, condition. So that was my my fixture on the plate. And this is the reaction force that's being shown over the time of the of the study. So we can see that kind of initial impact, almost that section where, you know, we're actually off of the plate and then we come back and we hit the plate again. So we can see that that data as well. So there's a lot of different things that we can select and take a look at as we're going through. And the next step is really to save this um, pro product and project. Up in the upper right hand corner, you see that arrow up to the right. That is the save option. And what that does is it saves those results out to the tenant on the cloud. And we can access those then from anywhere. So in this case, this is actually Matt logging into the 3D experience platform. So this is the web version of what we were just in. And what this is going to do is it's going to put him into a dashboard. And what you're going to see is we actually are creating a new tab on this dashboard. So Matt's going to search for that drop test study that we just created. And because we share the same tenant, we share the same um, collaborative space, he's able to pull up these results as well. And what we see here is it pulled those up. We can actually see the drop test listed in those results. And he's going to go straight to the structural performance engineer, structural mechanics engineer simulation. And through Anovia, we're going to look at all of the relations that are associated with this file. So what he's going to do here is actually expand this out. And what we're going to be able to do is see all of the things that are related to this component. We can also see if it was bookmarked, uh, you know, in in a certain place. So we can see that we have the demo files. We can see that we have the finite element model, the femrep, and then we can also expand that out into all the individual files and 
all of the other components. And what we're going to do here is we're actually going to pin this to that dashboard. And what that means is it's going to take and make those relations available in that new tab. And this is definitely the easiest way of getting back to files uh, that we found. And the nice part about this is we can rename that tab. We now have access to it. So if I have to get back to the drone drop test, it's going to be located in this in this dashboard. So from here, we're actually going to pull up a couple additional apps that are going to make viewing and understanding this model a little bit easier. And one of those is the 3D Play app. And it has this little up arrow in the corner. That means that we can use that as a widget. So all that we're going to do is drag that out into the dashboard. And this is going to allow us to then understand and view part of the model. So what we're going to do is actually take the model itself and drag it into the 3D Play app. And all that that is is, is allowing us to visualize what's happening or what uh, components are in that model. And we can actually see it with the mesh on, but we can certainly hide that mesh uh, as well. But this gives us, again, another kind of visual cue right on the web. It's very lightweight. With that Anovia backbone, we don't actually have to open up that model and manipulate it and adjust it. We can see that, uh, you know, live right here. So one of the other things that we're going to do is start up another app, and this app is going to be the results uh, viewer. So the physics simulation review, this is an app that as long as you have access to the 3D experience platform, and this can actually be done with a viewing license, so a very lightweight application. But let's say, you know, uh, your boss uh, or you are the boss and you need to view the results, but you don't want the overhead of trying to learn structural mechanics engineer or, you know, having that installed. You can actually view these physics results right on the web, very lightweight application, but with all the power that we investigated it in structural mechanics engineer. So what we see here is we can zoom in, we can actually animate that that crash test here again. We can see that again, that that um, shockwave move through the model. We can adjust it and rotate it on the screen as we want to see it. We can also look at different things, right? I want to look at the von Mises stress, maybe rather than the displacement uh, for that model. We can animate it. We can pause it. We can also do the probe tool as well. And we can step through the different increments of that plot there as well. So a lot of different options when it comes to just reviewing this inside the model. And, you know, maybe this is a, a, a major concern for us. We can actually put an annotation on this right inside of 3D experience on the platform. And, you know, ask, hey, you know, is this is this something that's going to be buckling, right? Is this something that we have to have to worry about? So we can add in, uh, you know, this annotation. So Matt is concerned with buckling. He wants me to run that study. When I launch this model on my end, I'll be able to see that annotation, understand it, and you know, uh, generate that. Now, what uh, Matt's doing here is he's sharing this dashboard with me. So he's looking looking for my login. He's going to find that, and he's going to give me a message here saying, "Hey, you know, take a look at this, uh, review what I put in the annotation, and you know, get back to me." Basically, so Matt went ahead and made that dashboard. He shared it with me. I'll be able to open that up on my end. That dashboard will be available in my 3D Experience window, and I'll be able to see anything that he had a concern with inside that model. And even beyond that, what we can do is we can actually open this up on any device. It doesn't have to be your desktop. It doesn't have to be your laptop. This is actually uh, Matt's phone. And, you know, maybe he had some other concerns with that model. He's logging into the 3D Experience platform on his phone at this point. So the movement of the device, right, we're no longer using a mouse. We're actually using the two fingers with the touchscreen. But 
the nice thing is we can scroll up through all of those windows that you know were put in that dashboard and we're able to again animate rotate view those results understand those results and matt could add any concerns that he has right from his phone here's the min max uh, call out on that as well so a lot of good functionality and capability well beyond what we could normally do with SOLIDWORKS, SOLIDWORKS simulation. So at the end of the day, you know, the question is why adopt 3D experience, uh, the Simulia for SOLIDWORKS? And, you know, we want to always improve our designs. We want to make better products while designing products better. Right, we want to get to market faster and we want to deliver quality. SOLIDWORKS simulation does an incredibly good job of analy analyzing, I'd say, 80% of what's out there in the world. But when you need to get into those high strain applications, high impact uh, applications, um, you know, crash type scenarios, that's when you start adopting, you know, this ad additional advanced technology. The other aspect that I've run into, and Matt can, can attest to this as well, it seems like the solvers run faster. They definitely are more robust. They can solve more robust problems, but they do indeed run faster on the exact same piece of hardware. So I've been incredibly impressed with that as well. So that definitely allows you to get to market, market faster. And the ability to have that mixed mesh, the quad elements and the TET elements that really allows you to do high strain, hyper elastic problems with very good accuracy and, you know, definitely adds that quality level into the into the design. So if those are things that are concerns for you, the Smulia for SOLIDWORKS might be a viable option to look into and kind of move forward with. That is what I had uh, for today. Any any questions that had come up, Matt? Uh, yeah, we have uh, one question from the chat here. I'll go, go ahead and read it to you. Uh, does general contact propagate the mates from SOLIDWORKS model, or does it guess at what the relationships between parts are? That's a good question. So just like SOLIDWORKS simulation, the mates are essentially ignored. Uh, the mates are not utilized in, in the analysis. Um, so it's looking at, basically what it does is think of your mouse on your desk, right? The mouse is sitting there, you can't push it through the desk, but you can slide it along the desk and you can certainly lift it off of the desk. So if there is clearance in between two components, it's going to allow for those to move in that clearance kind of bubble until they they come in contact with each other or they separate or lift away from each other so as a general contact is looking at the model it's understanding where the parts are relative to each other and how they can move relative to each other but it does not utilize the the mates inside of solidworks thank you everybody for attending thank you robert for presenting if you guys have further questions or would like uh, more information about uh, Simulia for SOLIDWORKS, definitely reach out to us and we are more than happy to answer any questions you have.